Good morning and welcome to you all. Sorry about the slight technical hitch with the first attempt at morning prayer. It all just froze on me, obviously. I'd have forgotten what it's supposed to be doing with my tablet this morning, having had a week off from live streaming. It's uh, good to be back with you all today. I hope you've had a good week. Ours has been a slight bit of a washout with the weather, but we've still managed to get out and about and uh, do a bit of walking. Even had a picnic one day, so that was lovely. So it's nice to be back with you all this morning for our service of morning prayer for Saturday the 20th of June. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. A song of God's praise. O God, you are my God, eagerly I seek you. My soul is a thirst for you. My flesh also faints for you as in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So would I gaze upon you in your holy place, that I might behold your power and your glory. Your loving kindness is better than life itself, and so my lips shall praise you. I will bless you as long as I live, and lift up my hands in your name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips when I remember you upon my bed and meditate on you in the watches of the night. For you have been my helper and under the shadow of your wings will I rejoice. My soul clings to you. Your right hand shall hold me fast. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. Psalm 42 As the deer longs for the water brooks, so longs my soul for you, O God. My soul is a thirst for God, even the living God. When shall I come before the presence of God? My tears have been my bread day and night, while all day long they say to me, Where is now your God? Now when I think on these things, I pour out my soul. How I went with the multitude and led the procession to the house of God, with the voice of praise and thanksgiving, among those who kept holy day. Why are you so full of heaviness, O my soul? And why are you so disquieted within me? For put your trust in God. For I will yet give him thanks who is the help of my countenance and my God. My soul is heavy within me. Therefore I will remember you from the land of Jordan and from Hermon and the hill of Mizar. Deep calls to deep in the thunder of your waterfalls. All your breakers and waves have gone over me. The Lord will grant his loving kindness in the daytime. Through the night his song will be with me. A prayer to the God of my life. I will say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? And why go I so heavily while the enemy oppresses me? As they crush my bones, my enemies mock me. While all the day long they say to me, where is now your God? Why are you so full of heaviness, O my soul? And why are you so disquieted within me? O put your trust in God, for I will yet give him thanks, who is the help of my countenance and my God. Come, Creator Spirit, source of life, sustain us when our hearts are heavy and our wells have run dry. For you are the Father's gift, with him who is our living water, Jesus Christ our Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our first reading is taken from the book of Joshua, 
chapter 24, verses 29 to the end. After these things, Joshua, son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died, being 110 years old. They buried him in his own inheritance, at timnath Sarah, which is in the hill country of Ephraim, north of Mount Gash. Israel served the Lord all the days of Joshua, and all the days of the elders who outlived Joshua, and had known all the work that the Lord did for Israel. The bones of Joseph, which the Israelites had brought up from Egypt, were buried at Shechem, in the portion of ground that Jacob had bought from the children of Hamor, the father of Shechem, for one hundred pieces of money. It became an inheritance of the descendants of Joseph. Eleazar, son of Aaron, died, and they buried him at Gibeah, the town of his son Phineas, which he which had been given him in the hill country of Ephraim. Here ends our first reading. A Song of Jerusalem, Our Mother Thus says our God, I will comfort you. You shall see and your heart shall rejoice. Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad for her. All you who love me, or you who love her, says the Lord, rejoice in her with joy. Or you who mourn over her, that you may drink deeply with delight from her consoling breast. For thus says our God, you shall be nursed and carried on her arm. As a mother comforts her children, so I will comfort you. You shall see in your heart shall rejoice. You shall flourish like the grass of the fields. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Thus says our God, I will comfort you. You shall see, and your heart shall rejoice. Our second reading is from St Luke's Gospel, chapter 12, verses 49 to the end. I came to bring fire to the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. I have a baptism with which to be baptised, and what stress I am under until it is completed. Do you think that I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, five in one household will be divided, three against two and two against three. They will be divided father against son and son against father. Mother against daughter, and daughter against mother. Mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. He also said to the crowds, When you see a cloud rising in the west, you immediately say, It is going to rain. And so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say, There will be scorching heat. And it happens. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky. But why do you not know how to interpret the present time? And why do you not judge for yourselves what is right? Thus, when you go with your accuser before a magistrate, on the way make an effort to settle the case, or you may be dragged before the judge, and the judge hand you over to the officer, and the officer throw you into prison. I tell you, you will never get out until you have paid the very last penny. Here ends our second reading. The Benedictus. Shine on us, O God, who dwell in darkness, and guide us into the way of peace. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, 
you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Shine on us, O God, who dwell in darkness, and guide us into the way of peace. So let us pray. As we gather together again this morning, we give thanks for this day, for all that this day will bring us, for the work we will do, the rest and relaxation we will enjoy, the beauty of the sunshine that we see and the wonder of creation around us. Lord, we thank you for all that we have in our lives, for our families and friends, our homes, food to eat, clean water to drink, so many of those things that we can easily take for granted, for so many in our world long for day by day. We pray for those without a permanent home, those living on the streets, sofa surfing or relying on hostels for a bed each night, that they would find places where they could receive the support they need. As we pray for the homeless, we pray for all those who are vulnerable in our society, those who have been made more vulnerable by this coronavirus, those who have become isolated and lonely, those who feel more vulnerable about going back outside again, those who have lost their employment, those who have relied on food banks and food larders, those who have relied on support through schools, social services and help where they can find it. We thank you Lord for those who volunteer as in our communities to try to help the needy, to try to help the lonely to try to combat some of the despair that is felt. We pray for those who've been providing food and meals for others, for those who have provided a friendly voice on the phone. We pray for those who've continued to work during this time of pandemic, the various different roles and responsibilities that they have, either out at work or working from home. We pray for those who have returned to work this past week and who, are who will be preparing to return in the coming weeks. We pray for their places of work, that they would be kept safe. We pray that we would all find a respect for each other in the way that we deal with each other, in the way that we are with each other, in the things that we do. Lord, we thank you for our families and friends, for those who care for us and those we miss. We pray for this opportunity that we have to meet together for prayer, praying for our brothers and sisters in the world who are persecuted for their faith and unable to meet openly or to celebrate their Christian faith. We pray for those who face that persecution across our world today. We pray also for peace in our world, for areas where there is conflict found, that there may be an end to it, a reconciliation of your people, a bringing together of all those, your children here on earth. We continue to pray for those who work across the NHS, for those on the frontline services and those behind the scenes. For those who've worked in various different sectors in our hospitals, the hospice, in our care homes or out in the community. For those who provide nursing care and pastoral support. Lord, we know that there are so many who cry out in pain and distress at this time. We give thanks for those who have recovered for those who are now well, 
those who are back with family. And amongst the many that we pray for in need of your healing touch today, we continue to pray for Bridget, John, Charlie, Wendy, Lisa, Morris, Margaret and Joyce. Lord, we pray that you would be with them and those who care for them this day. We pray for those who have died, those who have died recently and those whose memories we hold dear at this time. We pray for those who have died this past night and for those who have watched and waited with them. Lord, may your compassion and strength be with all those who mourn, who carry that pain of bereavement today. O oh God, the strength of all those who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers, and because through the weakness of our mortal nature we can do no good thing without you, grant us the help of your grace, that in the keeping of your commandments we may please you both in will and deed, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you very much for joining me for this service of morning prayer, either live or a little bit later on, as you've remembered that we're back to live streaming today. I hope you all have a very good day. We will be joining together for evening prayer at five o'clock if you're able to join us for that service. Tomorrow is, of course, Sunday, the second Sunday of Trinity, and we will be having our usual services at nine and five o'clock of morning and evening prayer. But we will also be live streaming at 10 o'clock our service of the Word Worship at Home service, which hopefully you'll be able to join us online. Again, that's live streamed on our Facebook page and then uploaded to YouTube if I can remember how to do it after having had a week off. In the meantime, do stay safe. Take care, look after yourselves. It's lovely to be back and um, you remain as always in my prayers.